Hello, it's Fred and Sheila McCoy at the Hatfield McCoy Museum in Liberty, Kentucky. FredMcCoy.com. Go to the top of the page and click on museum or uh, whatever you want to go to from there. I want to read you something. Uh, I want to uh, go over uh, vermin. What is a vermin? Wild animals that are believed to be harmful to crops, farm animals, or game, and that carry diseases parasites, worms, insects, people perceive to be despicable and as causing problems for the rest of society. Uh, noxious, objectable, and disgusting animals collectively, uh, especially those of small size and appear commonly and are difficult to control, such as flies, lice, bed bugs, cockroaches, mice, and rats. Annoying people who cause problems are sometimes called vermin like the vermin who bully others. And uh, the reason I'm, I wanna go over that is because this was, uh, this is uh, William Keith Hatfield. And um, there's a newspaper article there. Here, here's the article and the date that you can go to. September of last year, and um, Hatfield and McCoy families come together for the reunion. And once again, this is, this is the sellout, Ron McCoy, uh, who has taken the McCoy name and his great-great-great-grandfather, who he didn't even know he had until he was 35 years old. He didn't know he was even related to Randall McCoy till he was 35 years old. And then when he figured that out, he figured it was a good commercialization uh, project to uh, get some attention from. And he's definitely milked it over the years. But this is a newspaper article um, where uh, William Billy Keith Hatfield and the cousin to Rio Hatfield and Ron McCoy, great, great, great grandson of Randolph McCoy uh, have come together for reunion. And William Keith starts out and he says, those vermin, the McCoys, the horse, horse stealing, Pig kissing McCoys started the feud. And then he says, just kidding, uh, just kidding. Those, those are some harsh words to kid with. When I say things like that, my wife gets all over me. And mm -hmm. uh, this, this is a minister, by the way. You, you can see by his picture, this is a, 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 a ordained minister. And uh, this is his words. And instead of being at a nursing home or a hospital, I guess everybody's well in Oklahoma because he, he has plenty of time to come to Kentucky back and forth and, and say things like that, the vermin McCoys. I, okay, I see her shaking her head. I, I wanna make a point though, I, I, wanna, I wanna make a point here. And he says the McCoys started the feud. And then he says, I believe the conditions out of the Civil War, the bad things happening back and forth with the Union Home Guard, Union Home Guard, not, not Confederate, raiding Southern Virginia, which later become West Virginia in 1863. Hard feelings were uh, gendered during the time due to the conditions our families were living in. But now, as you can see, we all get along great, do we? Do we? We get along great as long as we let Rio Hatfield make up stories about Hubert Bay McCoy shooting his grandfather in the back three times and his grandfather shot and killed him when in fact Hubert Bay McCoy was unarmed and um, never shot no one in the back, much less Alan Hatfield. And Alan Hatfield was never shot in the back by Hubert Bay McCoy or anyone else for that matter. That was one of the stories that's been made up. And then you've got William Keith here that says, that's why we all get along great. We get along great as long as the McCoys over the years has allowed the West Virginia Hatfields to make comments like this and nobody ever says anything about it. We just take it and smile because, because he's holding his Bible and he's standing there telling you that and he's smiling and he's shaking hands with you and everybody says, oh, that's one of the nicest fellows I've ever met. Really? That's what you call a snake in the grass. That from, that's from Fred McCoy. That's a snake in the grass. Speaks with a forked tongue. Tells you one thing while he says another in his written stuff. That's going to go down in history. This is written into history. 
they may not remember nothing else, but they, they'll remember where this Hatfield said the McCoys were vermin. They stole horses. When, when in history has any of you ever heard of a, a McCoy? Back in that time, I mean, I'm sure there's stuff in history, but let's go to Randall McCoy's day. Who, who had the reputation for stealing the horse? Who had that reputation? Look at Lisa Alter's book. I forget what page it's on, but Lisa Alter, and, and uh, that she says that um, Randall McCoy charged Devil Ants was stealing his horse while he was um, a POW. And when he got home, he took a warrant out for uh, Devil Ants in Louisa, Kentucky. One of the Hatfields, they come back and they say, they was, Devil Ants was never in Louisa, Kentucky, and Randall McCoy, and I, well, I'm not going to walk all the way over to show you. It's in one of our videos. But on the emancipation that they signed, they actually signed that emancipation in Louisa, Kentucky, where Randall McCoy's horse uh, was supposedly stolen from. I don't know. I don't have no court documentation to that. You know how we are. If we don't have court documentation, we don't like to say it as the truth. But this man here just says he spoke into history, those horse-stealing McCoys. Mm -hmm. McCoys were never back then accused of stealing a horse. It seems like anything that Devil Ants was accused of, or the Hatfield, West Virginia Hatfields, they turned it around on the McCoys over the years. Deserter. Then they have Randall McCoy run while his family's been massacred. Horse thief. Random, Devil Ants supposedly stole Randall McCoy's horse, one of them. But yet he's, his grandson says that the McCoys were horse thieves. Uh, mm -hmm. Pig kissing McCoys. Pig kissing McCoys. You know, he had to bring that pig in there uh, because the, the, there's never been any doubt as to the Hatfields actually stealing the pig. They just got away with it. You've heard the old saying, got away with murder. Well, they got away with stealing the pig. Uh, let me go on. Uh, well, next he says, Hatfield said Life Magazine came to see his grandfather in 1911. And see, that's the thing about history. If you're going to do history, and you're going to try to be a historian part-time, and a minister part-time, and a, a legend part-time, you, you, you should get your history right. Life Magazine never came in there in 1911. Never happened. And if it did, Wilm Keith, show us a... Show us a, a 1911 Life magazine, please, with Devil Ants in it. Now, you may want to go to May the 22nd, 1944, and you, there might be a Life magazine, but there's no 1911 Life magazine out there with Devil Ants in it. If it is, we've never seen it, and we've got just about anything that you can think mm -hmm. of, Hatfield and McCoy, here. We've never seen a 1911 uh, Life magazine with Devil Ants Hatfield in it. And and that's what the man says. Hatfield said Life magazine came to see his great-grandfather in 1911. There's the rest of it. You can read for yourself what I've got in yellow. Now, he says, when Life came to see my great-grandfather, they said he was rich, religious, and respectable. And he was, Hatfield said, Sadly, my grandfather squandered the wealth. He's talking about Tennis Hatfield. Tennis Hatfield is supposedly his grandfather. Uh, of course, we don't know who anybody is on the West Virginia side. We just don't know right now because nobody's willing to take any DNA tests for us or for the people that's doing the testing, and it makes it difficult. It's funny how these people want to claim this heritage. They want to claim these newspaper articles. They want to be in all these stories but when you ask them to do a DNA so we can clear all that up, man, there's like a bunch of termites. You ever raise a board up and, and when you raise it, they f go everywhere? It, it, that's what they're like. It, they just scatter. When you mention DNA tests, whoa, that's like uh, evil. So that's what he says. His grandfather was rich and religious and respectable. Really? Well, this may help attribute to that. And this is what they got. They got him a Ponzi. Uh, the West Virginia Hatfields, Rio and Wilm Keith, they got him a Ponzi in Ron McCoy from North Carolina that didn't know he was even related till he was 35. Now, I guess they pat him on the back. I guess they buy him dinner because they're, they're, they're both pretty well off, it seems. And uh, I guess they take care of Ron McCoy because he, he lets them say anything they want. 
uh, all kinds of comments throughout the years, like when Bo and Ron was together with Rio, they said, what's two McCoys with one Hatfield? That's what it takes to have to double up, have to every little thing. Now that may not be much to somebody, but if you're a member of the Hatfield family or the McCoy family or both, and I would be doing the same thing if it was the other way around, but it's never been the other way around. It's always been the West Virginia Hatfields bullying the Kentucky McCoys, and it's wrong. And nobody has ever, ever stood up. Call me a butthole, call me whatever you want, but don't say Fred McCoy didn't stand up. And even Sheila to a point. Sheila stands up. I just have to do it in a semi-dignified manner. Otherwise, I'd be on here, it'd be beep, 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 beep. Because I'd tell you what these people really are. Yeah, well. Okay, here we go. Here's what helps them spread their... McCoy said, now this is Ron McCoy. This is the great, great, great grandson of Randall McCoy. Now just yesterday, we, we sold the first plaque on our display cases. Mm -hmm. We sold the first plaque to a gentleman in Florida. And guess who he is? He is the great, great, great grandson of Randolph McCoy. And he was thanking us for finally telling the truth and getting it out there about Randolph McCoy, for finally clearing up all these myths that people knew all these years, but nobody would take it on. He's also a career police officer like I was for years. He can't mess up his job or reputation or anything uh, to take up for his family name. But he's the same relation as Ron McCoy is that didn't even know he was related. Uh, unlike Ron McCoy, this man knows who his uh, relatives and ancestors are. In fact, his uh, great-great-grandfather was Floyd Hatfield. Floyd Hatfield, the man that this guy helped to uh, dedicate the historical marker on Floyd Hatfield's grave. Instead of having his great-great-grandson there, they've got a West Virginia Hatfield that flew in from Oklahoma so he could get some air time and TV time and newspaper time. And, and uh, how much sense does that make, people? It don't to me, but let's go with what Ron McCoy said in the newspaper. Ron McCoy said, Devil Ants was the Donald Trump of that day in Appalachia. Really? He built and made a family fortune on his own, and you have to give him credit for that, McCoy said. Devil Ants was a self-made man and is respectable. Randolph McCoy lost everything he had. He lost his wife and eventually moved to Pipeville. His house is still standing. Guys, listen. If I, I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to do that. Um, if you're not, I don't care if you're a Hatfield or McCoy. That should upset you. This is the great, great, great grandson of Randolph McCoy. And he says that Devil Ants Hatfield was a respectable man. When, when Devil wow. Ants Hatfield went to his grave, he still had warrants on him in Kentucky for the murder of three young men, two young men and a boy, a 15-year-old boy. Murder warrants, murder indictments. A respectable man? This is the man that wrote a book after he sued John Vance, wrote a book and says he's got a chapter on history. He's telling you the history of the Hatfields and McCoys. He don't even know he was a relative until he was 35. And that's where your history comes from. A self-made, respectable man. Devil Ants Hatfield got his start from bushwhacking. He deserted in the... Now listen to me. Listen to me. If you never watch another video, I don't even care if this is my last one. I, I get so disgusted when I see this stuff. And okay. If you, Devil Ants deserted. He joined the Civil War within three to five months. He was gone. He ran. He ran like a chicken, like a coward that he was. He left Randall McCoy and my great-great-grandfather Uriah McCoy, who was actually shot during that battle. What wasn't killed during that battle when Devil Ants and his bunch took off and ran were taken prisoner of war. Randall McCoy and my great-great-grandfather spent the next two years in a Civil War prison camp. Um, hard feelings? Of course hard feelings. But while they were doing that, Devil Lance comes home and duplicates what was known as the 
Logan Wildcats. And we've got a board in there. We've covered it. The, the legitimate Logan Wildcats. The Logan Wildcats was, was the 36th or the 39th. That, that was not their official name. That was a name given to them. They had fought a battle, and we've got it in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. They had fought a battle that day. And when they got back, somebody from another unit was telling somebody else about how hard the 39th, I think it was, or the 36th had fought that day. And he says, they fought like a bunch of wildcats. And that is how that unit got their nickname. It's not an official name that the, they come out with and said, hey, you're the Logan Wildcats. It's not. It was a made-up name for them. But that was the legitimate group that actually earned that title from fighting like a bunch of wildcats. Now, Devil Ants, when he deserts, he comes home to uh, Make Creek, and he hears all these people talking about the Logan Wildcats down in Warncliff, the Logan Wildcats over here. Not, not even in Mingo County or, or Make Creek. Mm -hmm. They're way off. Devil Ants tells them, we're part of the Logan Wildcats. We're the Logan Wildcats. And that's, that's how he got it. It's a made-up group for Devil Ants. For any of you that's not kept up with history. He made this group up like he belonged to this. He was a bushwhacker. You know, his grandson, great-grandson sitting here saying the Union was coming across and they was, uh, uh, oh God, the Union Home Guard was raiding mm -hmm. southern West Virginia. Mm -hmm. The Union Home Guard, how about Devil Ansis, bunch of bushwhackers that was raiding the Kentucky side, taking their chickens, taking their animals, taking what they didn't take, they killed. If they couldn't take it with them, they killed it. They made it so rough on the people on the eastern part of Kentucky there that it was unbarreled. Listen, if you, uh, she's going to post these pictures at the end. I've got, when you see this picture, it won't let me print the picture out for some reason. There's the story and the date. Mm -hmm. I'll you, take pictures of them. It's got a picture of both of them. It's got a picture of William Keith. Okay. And it's got a picture of Ron McCoy on there. So you'll see Ron McCoy too. So it don't seem like I'm picking on the Hatfields. I'm not. Um, other than that, it's Fred and Sheila McCoy at the Hatfield and McCoy Museum. When I started this out, I said, don't get excited. You did don't, pretty good. Don't get excited. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. How can you not get mad or upset when these people, this is last year that they're writing into history. First of all, he calls us vermin. Th this is a minister. If I don't tell you about a man's reputation or character, I don't know what will. And you know what they say about character. If you want to know a person's character, look at their friends. Here's your two peas in a pod, both of them. And they can put Rio Hatfield right in between them. Maybe they can be the three stooges because that's what it's like. You know, I seen a post yesterday where Ron McCoy's got him. He says, we're buds. Buds. It means more to you to call somebody a bud because they got a little bit of money, a little bit of clout, a little bit of power. They have no character. They have no dignity. I wouldn't. I've seen people. Thanks for joining us. We've enjoyed it. Fred and Sheila McCoy, Hatfield McCoy Museum. Thank you. Thank you. Please like and subscribe.